Welcome to the Chaos Sector. We return to the Matrix. There's a lot of, uh, chaos flying around right now. Let's review everything thus far. First, Trump and Old Joe have their debates, which led to one of the most embarrassing performances in political history. Then, Trump is shot at a rally by the Secret Service. Yes, the Secret Service, and some patsy was used to throw everyone off. On a side note, we will revisit the alleged shooter. Then you had old Joe announcing that he was not running for president, and as a result, Kamala Harris has magically been nominated to run against Trump. No democracy was harmed during the filming of this show. Sure, Harris skips a congressional address by a foreign ally, a Congress member passes away our condolences, of course. Megan the Stallion embarrasses herself in a concert disguised as a rally for Harris, and Trump doesn't back down from a confrontation in the National Association of Black Journalists. A lot of tensed political moments, which indicates there will be a shocker come election time. Either Trump destroys Harris, which will cause hysteria on the left, or Harris will defeat Trump, which will cause hysteria on the right. And in between, you have the reality of either conclusion. I think it's safe to say that the fun out in Wonderland has dwindled down. Like parents who took their children to Disneyland well, it's time to go back home, kids. Of course, the kids want to stay in Disneyland forever. That's the mainstream media. They want to stay in Wonderland all the way up until the presidential election. At some point, you're going to have to face reality. Speaking of facing reality, there have been some very embarrassing moments within this Wonderland experience. Harris has had her share, of course, but let's focus on the wacko Chuck Schumer. Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries officially endorse Harris as the Democratic nominee. Let's listen to this eulogy, I mean, endorsement of Harris. We have some breaking great, great developments. We're gonna go listen to uh, Senator Chuck Schumer as it relates president to Harris. Kamala Harris. Let's listen. And will be elected president in November. We are brimming with excitement, enthusiasm, unity. On Sunday, President Biden showed the world what a great man he is. His true patriotism, his profound sense of decency came shining through. We all know it was not an easy decision for him. But just as he has done in his, his entire life, President Biden's selfless decision not to seek the nomination put our country, our party, and our future first. At his core, he's just an honorable man, a family man, a man of deep faith. We love him. We truly do. Oh, old Joe didn't seek the nomination? He already had the nomination. What the hell is Schumer? It's so artificial. Everything he is saying about old Joe is flat out a lie. Well, to some degree, as far as policies, he was quite moderate in his career. But it's obvious the party was hijacked by progressives and far-left liberals. Now, of course, we all know old Joe is a stubborn mule or jackass to be technical. He did not step down by his own volition. He was given an ultimatum by this very person and his partner in crime, Nancy Pelosi, with Obama lurking in the shadows as well. Old Joe was told, you are not winning the presidential election. And if you don't oblige, we will enact the 20th Amendment to get your ass out of here. They have that power by congressional majority and the Constitution, so he had no choice but to step aside. Schumer is executing damage, damage control, control to hide the betrayal within the Democratic Party, all because they're butthurt that old Joe ran out of gas and was not going to beat Trump. This Schumer was the same person praising old Joe, among other Democrats and left-wing media, claiming he was sharper than ever, was the only person who could beat Trump, blah, 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 yet quickly conspired against him when that approval rate kept dropping to historical lows and the polls showing Trump leading. And because they're more consumed with the political power of their party and not loyalty the party should have, they shoved that knife in the old man's back and told him to retire. How cruel, elder abuse, I tell you. I'll have more to say on President Biden later this afternoon in my floor speech. But President Biden's selfless decision has given the Democratic Party the opportunity to unite behind a new nominee, and boy, oh boy, are we enthusiastic. Since President Biden's announcement, we've seen the Democratic Party swiftly coalesce behind Vice President Kamala Harris. When I spoke with her Sunday, she said she wanted the opportunity to win the nomination on her own and to do so from the grassroots up not top-down. We deeply respected that, Hakeem and I did. She said she would work to earn the support of our party, and boy, 
Has she done so in quick order? You know, Schumer's fuckery is only magnifying the madness. He's so fake, right? And that little laughing? You do realize that he is literally reading that from his notes, right? Meaning it says on the paper, insert laugh here. Has she done so? It's insanity. And then there's more insanity. Schumer claims Harris wanted to earn the nomination from the Democrats, yet, uh, if that were the case, why didn't she demand there be another Democratic debate to earn that nomination then? How else would she earn the nomination other than fucking fighting for it through that Democratic process? Huh? Oh, I guess she will earn it by having the mainstream media declare her the nominee? This is an actual press conference by the majority leader in the Senate trying to gaslight for one and is openly violating the election rules and the process of selecting a presidential candidate. It doesn't matter if old Joe picked her as the nominee. It doesn't matter if Schumer or Pelosi picked her as the nominee. It's the American people and other Democrats who have the right to determine who will be the nominee. But they tried to allude to old Joe stepping down as the president, to why she is the nominee. Yet even in this subliminal messaging, she would still have to battle other Democrats for that nomination, just like old Joe did. I mean, he has no shame whatsoever, and Harris is just as bad. If he was such a leader, he would consult with the other wackos in the party and schedule a quote, secondary, since old Joe won the primaries and have Harris earn that nomination. But no, we need the female version of Obama front and center right now. Yes, we will refer to Harris as the female version of Obama, because that was always the plan. Old Joe chose a woman of color that resonates with that same dynamic of Obama when he ran for president. There were other women of color, specifically black women, but you know, their skin tone was a bit darker. Can't have that, right, Old Joe? They can't be too dark because then it captures the essence of I don't know, a real black woman, better yet, an African-American black woman. Nah, we'd rather the lighter-skinned black person. It's easier on the eyes. Hmm, seems there's some light-skinned privilege in the Democratic Party, hey? Have you ever noticed that the darker-skinned black politicians are Republicans and the lighter-skinned are Democrats? Something to ponder. Let's continue. Vice President Harris has done a truly impressive job securing the majority of delegates needed to win the Democratic Party's nomination to be our next president of the United States. The vast majority of my senators quickly and enthusiastically endorsed her. First of all, we don't truly know what she's gained. We won't know, well, at least at face value, we won't know until the Democratic National Convention. Another slick tactic, if someone wanted to challenge Harris, they would need access to the list of delegates to persuade them for support. In a New York Times article on this issue, they raised the question about a potential challenger. Quote, only officials at the Democratic National Committee and the Biden campaign have the full roster of delegates. If someone decided to run against Ms. Harris, the first challenge would be to gain access to the people who will make that decision. Without access to the delegate list, alternative candidates to Ms. Harris are effectively blocked from both canvassing the delegates for their opinions and trying to persuade them to support someone other than Ms. Harris. There is no evidence to date that any serious political campaign other than Mr. Biden's and the DNC has made an effort to reach out to the convention's delegates." Unquote. In other words, money talks, and that money determines who will be backed. Since those delegates invested so much money into old Joe and his vice president, no other Democrat will be able to truly challenge it because this would mean they would have to reinvest into another candidate with not much time before the convention and the presidential election. And that's the money aspect. But you also have the concern about the popularity or influence of candidates. Delegates won't back someone who they feel is a dud, especially against Trump. So essentially what happened here was, well, it was kind of like extortion in a way. Democrats rigged the primaries for old Joe, to lock him in as the nominee. He then turns around, chooses to hand over his nomination to his vice president, basically forcing the delegates to back her because, well, they're not having another primary or secondary as we call it. So she's the nominee by coercion. It's basically extorting the delegates, but instead of the money being the main objective, it's the candidate being Harris they're forced to support. So now that the process has played out, from the grassroots bottom up, 
We are here today to throw our support behind Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm clapping. You don't have to. <laughs> it's a happy day. What can I say? <laughs> Together. Oh, my fucking. How embarrassing. Quite lonely when you expect people to cheer and applaud for Harris being the new nominee. It was horrible, and that nerdy, nervous laugh, it's unbelievable. Like a computer geek trying to talk to the pretty girl in school, that awkward laughing after telling some cheesy joke. At that moment, Schumer realizes not only is he a loser, but the silence at that moment defined how uninspired everyone was. You would think everyone would be applauding for such a important decision, right? A president steps down, the vice president is then the nominee for president, let's back Harris and win it for the Democratic Party. But no. Odd silence filled the room, making Schumer feel like a complete fool when he expected a pleasant reaction. Oh my days. Let's listen to this segment again, because this is the epitome of the circus known as the Democratic Party. We are here today to throw our support behind Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm clapping, you don't have to. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. We, we will keep and hopefully grow the Senate majority. And under future speaker, Hakeem Jeffries, we will win back the House. Democrats are moving forward stronger and more united than ever before. In just the last 36 hours, I have seen a surge of enthusiasm from every corner of our party uniting behind Vice President Harris. An enthusiasm felt in every corner of the country, and it's contagious among Democrats. The volunteers, the small contributions, they're just pouring in in ways even beyond our expectations. Now, we all know that Vice President Harris has a tremendous record to run on. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Tremendous record to run on. Okay, I see what's going on here. Schumer is not expecting for anyone to actually believe that. But more so, it's something he's saying to create the illusion in his own mind that she has a tremendous record to run on. You see, there are many types of liars. You have those who believe their lies and you have those who want others to believe their lies. Schumer is the type of liar who doesn't really want you to believe his lies. Rather, he wants to believe the lies himself for his own illusions of grandeur. I'm clapping, you don't have to. <laughs> It's a happy day, what can I say? Since he already knows in the real world, he, among other Democrats, are suffocated with the fact that their party is a sinking ship. He's like the person on the ship pretending everything is normal, you know, having a glass of wine, ordering shrimp platters or whatever, while others are panicking trying to survive. Yes, a psychopath, basically. And in this illusion, which no genuine American citizen is inhabiting, they speak and behave as if they're normal, just like, well, normal human beings. They only snap out of that illusion when there are no more escape routes into that illusion. In other words, when they're angry, yes, that's a real emotion as a reaction to the real world that they constantly reject. And now begins the next chapter in our quest to make sure Donald Trump does not become president. Today, with one voice, we speak about the dangers he presents to working families, to our country, and to our democracy. We, we see very clearly how nervous the Republicans are about our new nominee. Well, they ain't seen nothing yet. Last night, Vice President Harris secured a majority of delegates. Today, in Wisconsin and across America, we begin our next chapter, and it will be our best yet. Vice President Harris will beat Donald Trump and become the next President of the United States of America. Applause. Hakeem. Thank you, Lita Schumer. <laughs> Applause? That's priceless. Schumer realizes he's on an island by himself. Well, Hakeem Jeffries decided to join him, I guess, so he wouldn't feel totally embarrassed. Nobody in that room believes that Harris will beat Trump. That's why there was no applause, you crazy old man. You can't generate an applause when, for one, they know your party stabbed old Joe in the back because he was definitely gonna lose. And then you present the vice president to old Joe, who was just as bad. They're not psychopaths like you. They don't live in an alternate reality um, trying to run from the truth. In fact, I think it will be even worse for Harris because of her record. See, old Joe was sedated, drugged up. He was Bernie Lomax being carried around 
the entire time of his presidency. The real culprits behind that administration, one of them is up next to the plate, nominated as the candidate for president. She will get exposed for knowing that old Joe was not mentally nor physically fit to run for a second term, nor currently hold that position. She will get exposed for all of the policies that align with her ideologies that Bernie Lomax was forced to implement. I mean, at least old Joe had the excuse of being a withering senior citizen who tried to fit in with the cool progressives of the party. Harris, on the other hand, is the core of the far-left radicalism that destroyed the party. She has more accountability than old Joe. And right out the gate, perhaps the biggest issue would be she didn't earn that nomination and right to even debate Trump. Last second replacement? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way in politics. You have to earn that replacement. You can't get the credit for the work if you never did the work. And you see, it keeps justifying the narrative that she was a DEI vice president, and then due to that basically was handed the nomination for president. She didn't earn her role as vice president because it was based on gender and race. That's not what we're saying. That's what old Joe told the American citizens. And she definitely didn't earn the presidential nomination. It all lines up. Oh wait, what am I saying? She has a tremendous record. Right, Schumer? <laughs> Many on the right are a bit concerned not due to any threat Harris poses, but the machine behind her. Think about it. Democrats rigged the primaries in favor of old Joe, offering little to no resistance from fellow Democrats. It's been proven. And like we've pointed out in previous episodes, even Democrats, Elizabeth Warren and Donna Brazile, exposed how the DNC was rigged for Hillary Clinton. So there's enough evidence to prove there is cause for concern. Old Joe steps down, Harris is the nominee with no votes, no primaries to justify her nomination, and is paraded around as if she is the official Democratic candidate. This was a coup against Old Joe and Harris was in on it the entire time. But the thing is, Old Joe allowed this to happen for the illusion of the highest seat of power in his political career. Now, if Democrats have done this, it's not a wild conspiracy theory to suggest there may be some uh, funny business come election time which ends up with a final tally in favor of Harris. Here's something else to think about. Recently, Venezuela's presidential election gained attention due to claims that election was rigged in Nicolas Maduro's favor, as reports claim there may have been election fraud and voter intimidation. Quote, when the Venezuelan government announced that strongman Nicolas Maduro had won the presidential election, the opposition was one step ahead. Expecting that Maduro would claim victory no matter the results, hundreds of thousands of volunteers organized to monitor the election had already pulled reams of printouts from voting machines, tallying millions of votes, and a vast majority of them were in favor of opposition candidate Edmundo Gonzalez. They were scanned, verified, and uploaded to the internet so fast that when global leaders demanded the Maduro regime provide detailed proof of the election results, it was the opposition that delivered evidence of its victory by publishing printouts of the results for the world to see. Those efforts, detailed to the Miami Herald by a key insider, have become a crucial cog in the international pressure building against Maduro, who is accused of stealing the election, and in support of Gonzalez, who has now been declared by the United States and other nations as Venezuela's rightful president-elect. Given the overwhelming evidence, it is clear to the United States, and most importantly, to the Venezuelan people, that Edmundo Gonzalez won the most votes in Venezuela's July 28th presidential election, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said in a statement Thursday night, citing the opposition's proof and corroboration by independent observers." Unquote. Now, you want to know why I mentioned the Venezuela presidential election? Because for one, there is a connection between the United States and Venezuela. Dominion, and Smartmatic. Now, Smartmatic was the main technology supplier for 14 Venezuelan national elections. However, in March of 2018, Smartmatic allegedly ceased operations in Venezuela. So, what voting system have they been using since 2018? Let me guess Dominion, which is a North American voting system company. Remember, President-elect Edmundo Gonzalez just exposed the attempt to rig the election for Nicolas Maduro. And we can assume the voting machines used was Dominion. Simply put, Nicolas Maduro had been rigging elections through the voting machine, 
the same machine that was introduced in the 2020 presidential elections in the United States, which also reported to have, quote, irregularities. As we know, the voting process was altered due to the Clover virus. And lo and behold, Dominion was snuck into the back door, like a thief in the night, pun intended. In several states, polling stations were covering the windows, preventing monitors from visibly seeing inside. It was the same tactics used by Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela to ensure that his cheating wouldn't be exposed. There was all types of weird and nefarious activity going on. You had vans delivering, quote, overseas ballots from voters, which arrived past the deadline. You had ballots in a freaking wagon that someone spotted and recorded. I mean, it was clearly suspicious. And of course, there were a slew of so-called fact-checkers coming out attempting damage, damage control. control. Trump's legal team challenged the results, of course, claimed there was evidence of fraud. There were hearings with election officials. Most of them obviously were complicit. They presented their claims. State election officials all examined the surveillance on the projector, and somehow it didn't constitute any violations nor criminal activity. You had the quote, First, Karen and Melissa Carone, who testified, claiming there was voter fraud, she instantly was mocked and ridiculed on social media and even Saturday Night Live. But apparently she was employed as a IT worker contracted by Dominion. Quote, Melissa Carone, an IT worker contracted by Dominion Voting Systems, who worked at the TCF Center in Detroit, Michigan, alleged Tuesday election workers were scanning the same ballots over and over as many as eight to ten times. Speaking at a Michigan Senate Oversight Committee hearing in Lansing, Carone also claimed election officials were in on it." Unquote. Now, of course, everyone came out and so-called debunked her claims, and social media made a mockery of her. Yet the evidence was substantial throughout certain states, such as Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and those election officials, including the courts, all denied any wrongdoing. That's not proof, my friends. That's just echo chambers. It's funny how individuals claim something is false or misinformation, using the government as their justification. Yet, when the shoe is on the other foot, they dismiss that same government and claim it's corrupt. And the most controversial video footage from State Farm's arena. Poll workers were spotted pulling cases from underneath tables. I mean, come on. They claimed a pipe burst, which led to a four-hour delay, as an excuse for their unusual procedures. A special counsel subpoenaed security footage from State Farm's arena, which clearly showed poll workers scanning ballots multiple times through the machine. That legal team was sued by Dominion, whose voting machines were used in the 2020 elections. The mother and daughter controversy. Where there was video footage of the mother and daughter and a male at the polling station, the male standing up, was shielding the view of the exchange between the mother and daughter, which was a flash drive. And that flash drive, my friends, was one of the sources of voter fraud. Giuliani alleged that was exactly what was spotted being exchanged, and the daughter was asked what was passed to her in that video, and she said her mother handed her a mint. Now we broke all of this down, and when she stated it was a mint her mother handed her, at the hearing, there was an awkward silence, and one individual sitting behind her actually started laughing a bit. Because it was absurd, she couldn't hold back the laughter. If it was a mint, why were you staring at the camera as if you were guilty of something? Because it was, in fact, a flash drive. They tried to disguise this criminal activity, but we spotted it years ago. The mother handed the flash drive to the daughter. She then held it for a moment, and then slid the flash drive into the left pocket of the male standing in front of the camera. Very slick, but not slick enough. You need more WD-40. If anyone cares to check that out, search for Political Matrix Episode 12. We break everything down. Of course, we were censored discussing the 2020 election, but it's nothing new. The daughter testified, claiming Trump was basically being racist by accusing her of election fraud. They were awarded like $150 million in a defamation lawsuit against Trump. Yeah, the courts were so desperate to cover everything up, they would pay out a whopping $150 million to poll workers who are literally seen on camera scanning ballots multiple times through the machines. You had the wacky Elena Parent, who was clearly unhinged in those hearings. Her body language, the nervous tone in her voice attempting to refute the claims. I mean, if you listen to her in those hearings, 
she clearly was protecting the poll workers who were committing crimes and election officials who were sweeping it under the rug. We exposed it all. She stated that, that the claim there was election fraud and that surveillance was debunked. Yet other officials stated it couldn't have been debunked at that time because it was the first time the surveillance was viewed. And she literally was freaking out. And that's why her eyeballs were popping out her sockets because she knew the truth could possibly be revealed. This is a prime example of wacky Democrats who have electing power in local and state offices. While everyone focuses on the main players of each side, it's these individuals who should be exposed more often because you rarely see them in the public spotlight. In Georgia, she was one of the most vocal and defiant in those hearings. Ironic, her name is parent, because if she has children, uh, I'm concerned for their mental and physical health. In State Farms Arena specifically, the press, including poll watchers, were told counting was done for the evening, and after they left, the poll workers proceeded to pull cases from underneath the tables, scanned ballots, multiple times by the way, but some lingering press and poll watchers hadn't left the arena yet. These individuals provided signed affidavits to what they observed. Mind you, the poll watchers are there specifically to ensure that the count of ballots is done properly and there isn't any illegal activity going on. Yet it was all shut down by the Supreme Courts. And uh, that's why Republicans should be concerned, because of the machine behind Harris. And don't you find it ironic that the United States has the audacity to thoroughly investigate Venezuela's election and determine there was election fraud, but did not genuinely investigate their own election in the previous cycle. The Supreme Court's ruled there wasn't election fraud, yet there was election fraud. Some of it was caught on camera by several sources. Oh, I get it. We used the same technology to rig our election against Trump, but play the hero to expose the rigging in another country who attempted to use the same technology to rig the election for another president. Yep, that's the government for you. Always playing the hero. Keyword, playing. So, uh, knowing that Democrats rigged their own primaries in favor of Hillary Clinton by Elizabeth Warren and Donna Brazile's own admission, they rigged the primaries for old Joe. Then they literally violated the democratic process of officially nominating a replacement for old Joe after his departure. But they tried to justify this election violation. Quote, multiple election law experts told PolitiFact that Democrats are legally secure in switching out Biden between now and the convention period, which runs from August 19th through the 22nd in Chicago. A key reason the Democrats' actions are not unlawful is that Biden is not yet officially the nominee and isn't on any ballots. Typically, state rules say that after a political convention or another process, the party will transmit the name of its presidential nominee by a certain date so that states can print the name on ballots." Unquote. Although they claim that old Joe was not technically the nominee because he wasn't officially on any ballots yet, to justify the transfer over to Harris as the potential nominee, this is flat-out nonsense. He won the primaries, he had the delegates, he had the money behind him, and he had already had his presidential debates against Trump. That is the key. Everything else is a bunch of cow dung. So if you claim he wasn't technically the nominee as he wasn't on state ballots yet, then how can old Joe participate in presidential debates if he isn't the official nominee? You see this nonsense? I mean, do you understand what's going on here? And to add to that, if he isn't the official nominee, yet he somehow was uh, nominated unofficially, then the presidential debates were actually unofficial as well because he wasn't the official Democratic nominee definition here. A presidential debate is a debate between two political parties and their nominated candidates. These two candidates debate. Did you get that? They debate to see who wins the debate to help citizens decide who to vote for as the next president. I think that's pretty simple, right? Oh, but there's a problem here. Due to a mysterious request by Old Joe's campaign, the debate was held June 27. Now, now why did Old Joe request this? Well, it wasn't him. It was the wackos behind him. Oh, you want to know why they did it? Because they wanted to, quote, jolt Americans to attention sooner than later about their consequential choice in 2024. Quote, the Biden campaign shook up the race, publicly offering to bring forward the first presidential debate by three months. The move was meant to jolt Americans to attention sooner than later about their consequential choice in 2024. 
Mr. Biden's advisors have long believed that the drawing realization of a Trump-Biden rematch will be a balm for the president's droopy approval ratings. You know what this translates to? Our candidate has dementia. His approval ratings are in the toilet. Let's try to gaslight Americans with a shakeup in the political landscape. But he failed, dropping his approval rating even lower. Yet, don't fall asleep. Harris was set up to be the new nominee from the jump. Are we sure she can beat Trump, though? Yes, uh, it'll happen. We need more time to rig the election. It's simple. See, if the schedule was dated in its original format, they would be pressured to rig it in a small amount of time, in connection to the growing disapproval of old Joe and his administration. So let's reschedule it three months earlier to give us time to commit uh, all types of election violations. This is a conspiracy. Let me dig even deeper into that earlier debate. See, the Democrats knew Trump would accept the debate in June because, well, he knew he would beat old Joe. But what Trump didn't know was that was the plan. Old Joe was a decoy. He even embellished by pretending he was lost and confused. So the country fell for it, scrutinizing his performance. But that performance was used to push Harris in. Yet in a cunning way, though. As Democrats agreed to allow old Joe to keep his so-called power by remaining the president, but Harris will be the presidential nominee for the party. See, things would have been possibly different if Trump had rejected the request to debate that early. Perhaps Democrats would strategize a bit more aggressively due to having old Joe stuck in no man's land. Maybe he would have dropped out in that scenario as well. But something tells me, due to no debate and horrible performance as a decoy in June, Democrats would have to go back to the drawing board in real time, which indicates they would have followed the democratic tradition, as they say. But Trump fell for the bait. Yet, it's more so a razzle-dazzle of misdirection, to be honest. They're banking on time, the time frame from when old Joe dropped out to when the presidential debates start and when the presidential election begins. It's a cunning move, but it's riddled with flaws. So yeah, go ahead and choose Harris as the nominee, even though the prior nominee had already held fucking presidential debates for guess what, the next president. Out of this world, I tell you. And even more, in that scenario, Harris would replace the unofficial official nominee without her own official nominal process and is allowed to hold presidential debates? Harris is also not the nominee, literally, because she hadn't went through the process of being nominated in Democratic primaries. And if she isn't the official nominee yet, as that would happen in the Democratic convention, how can she hold a presidential debate with Trump prior to that convention? How can how she can hold she a presidential, presidential debate, debate with Trump, Trump, Trump prior, prior to, that to that convention? convention. This is, it's, it's just bizarro world. She's running around holding rallies, slating it as her presidential campaign. Yet she literally skipped an entire process of participating in primaries. And the biggest problem is you can't have rallies and an official presidential campaign if you're not the presidential nominee. They are basically putting the cart before the horse here. Think about that. I know everyone knows what that means, but truly grasp that saying in connection to this fuckery. The horse represents the, well, horsepower, the labor, the work, the lifting. And the cart is the lighter load that can't go forwards without the horse in front to produce the power to travel. Now, Harris being nominated as the presidential candidate is the cart, but the process of reaching that nomination is the horse or the labor to achieve that destination. She hasn't done the work to reach that destination. So despite all of the magic pixie dust sprinkled throughout in mainstream media, Democrats praising her, Harris will not be able to move forward because it's literally backwards how she obtained all of that praise. But what do you expect from corrupt politicians? Democrats are so frightened to lose this election, they would put the cart before the horse, just creating new ways to expose their insanity. It's showing all the signs of a rigged election. You have old Joe being used as a stumbling, mumbling decoy in the presidential debates. Then he drops out, Harris becomes the unofficial nominee, and somehow is prepared to hold presidential debates, without the official nomination, bonkers. There was another presidential debate old Joe and Trump were supposed to have. Now is this why Harris is placed in the position to debate Trump? Well, currently, She's still the vice president, so how can she debate Trump in a presidential debate when she should be debating J.D. Vance at this very moment? Trump is already a lock. He is officially the nominee for Republicans. Again, she is currently the vice president and is not officially nominated as the presidential candidate. It doesn't matter what the mainstream media is spewing. 
it doesn't matter what lunatics Schumer and Pelosi are spewing. Vice President Harris will beat Donald Trump and become the next president of the United States of America. It doesn't matter what Democrats are spewing. Until there is a Democrat National Convention which officially nominates Harris, she is still, I repeat, she is still the vice president. But yet Harris is running around deciding who her vice president pick will be. Putting the cart before the horse, the cart being the vice president in this scenario. You can't pick anything because you yourself haven't been picked. Fucking insanity. She's not the president, nor is she the presidential nominee. She can't hold a presidential debate in the same year she is the vice president. Unless the president steps down and she becomes the president due to old Joe's resignation. This hasn't happened. Well, it has, but it's being protected. So this has to be a violation in the Federal Elections Committee policy, right? If the sitting president has not resigned, been impeached, disabled, or passed away, a vice president is not eligible to hold a presidential debate in that same year of vice presidency or whatever. Going further, a candidate can't be recognized as a presidential candidate until an official nomination has taken place. It has to be something along those lines in their policies. Democrats have violated any and every policy remotely close to what I've stated here. They've already rigged the process. This will go down as the wackiest, corrupted election year in the history of the United States. That's why we expose this insanity. They believe American citizens are not competent enough to understand their political dumpster garbage. This pattern of rigging can potentially happen in the presidential election. Maybe Trump and his team should be one step ahead and obtain the votes as soon as the results have tallied and display it to the American people to reveal the truth, just like President Edmundo Gonzalez did in Venezuela. This is the chaos sector.